I've always wanted to show you guys exactly what I do whenever I edit because some people still don't believe I use just a particular um, research and technique to make my images look splendid and post them on Instagram. I am not really a fan of posting everything I do here on Instagram, but once in a while, you never know who is watching. And if you want to see this image on my Instagram page, you can check down in the description. I have a link there which will direct you to my Instagram. Check also the other pictures I've posted and I think I'll be putting up more walkthrough videos on how I edited each and every picture I've posted on my Instagram page. So it's something I want to start doing and let me know if that's something you also enjoy because if I should follow what you guys have been doing for me on my previous videos when it comes to editing, I realize people enjoy when I show them the behind the edits of whatever goes on when I'm editing a particular picture. So I shot this image during one of my online class sessions. If you're interested, I'm still holding these class sessions for anyone who is interested in improving or beginning photographers or um, um, amateur photographers or intermediate photographers or those who want to upgrade their skills in the photography industry. So this I shot with a 100mm f2.6 macro lens, ISO 100, 1 over 1 60th of a second of a shutter speed and f8. I have a video on where I explain why you should shoot 1 over 1 60. I'll link it in the description. I think that's my previous video before this. So if you haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, make it a point to subscribe, like, comment and share this video so that others can also be able to enjoy this privilege you're enjoying here on my YouTube channel. So let's get into what we have to do today. This is the image I shot. I used a square box with my Goddess 8600 and I I think the flash power was at 1 over 116. That was my first time using the square box to light up a beauty image. So this is a before um, capture one and this is after Photoshop. So before capture one and after capture one, then we have after Photoshop. So I think I would want to, okay, no, let's, this is before capture one, right? So whenever I'm in capture one, I'll show you what exactly I did here in capture one when I'm editing beauty images. When I'm in capture one, um, this is capture one to into one. So I have the option to correct the profile coming in from the Canon 5D Mark IV. So with the generic, with the generic, you're looking at um, a lot of reds. With the standard, you're not looking at a lot of reds in the shadow. So I prefer the pro standard. Let me let's still show you the before. So I changed my ISIS profile to the pro standard, which works most of the time for me. Made sure I changed the temperature because if I should show you the after, this is the before. The before, I had a lot of blue cast coming in from, I don't know if it was my light source or if it was the reflective source box I was using, if it was casting blue. I really don't know. So, but to be able to make sure this was at the right temperature, I had to make further adjustments to turn the temperature from what it was before to what it is now because this is exactly what I saw when I was shooting my subjects during that particular class. And here in the color editor session, I really didn't do anything in the color editor session because I think whatever color I was getting from the skin was great. And I love the makeup. I wanted to try something new. What this, is, this used to be something I used to do with colorful makeups. And I was like, okay, fine, let's try something new. I'll link the makeup artist also down in the description. You can check it out, you can hit it up for most of your beauty gigs or beauty photography collaborations in the color balance i also did nothing the color balance so here in the color profile the only thing i touched here is the base characteristics and my white balance then we move into the exposure tab and here in the exposure tab i have added a bit of contrast reduce the brightness i always reduce the brightness because i'm always adding white here in the level so let me show you before i'll hold option on the keyboard and click on this so this is before the levels and this is after the levels before the levels and after the levels and after doing this bringing up brightness into the levels i mean into the white i try reducing the brightness so that i don't really get my image to be blown out as this right so introduce a bit of darkness and there's a trick when you're editing dark skin always try to keep it undertone don't try and expose for the dark skin in post just because if you do that you're going to work a lot and you're not really going to get 
the preferred skin color you're looking out for so a trick to minimize editing dark skin always try and edit it under tone right so right from there i think i opened up my shadows a little bit and that was it aside from that i really didn't do anything and oh whenever i'm shooting with my camera i remove the sharpness for my camera and here in post processing also i removed it all right so let me show you the before and this is the after so before and after so this is what i did here in capture one so the general before and the after once again before and after so this is what we ended up getting in photoshop and i'm going to take you right into photoshop here in photoshop i really didn't do much majority of the job was done with um healing which i also tried learning a new trick by using my clone stamp too um this time around i really didn't use the 23 flow uh, percent 23 percent flow i used an 82 percent flow something i think i watched on someone's youtube but you should be able to also play with the 23 percent flow by in all i enjoyed the blemish removal i really didn't remove a lot just because i wanted to also try and use the dodging and burning to keep everything as natural as possible so healing i mostly use clone stamp 2 and the healing brush 2 that is if i'm working on an empty layer so i created an empty layer renamed it to healing made sure the sample was current if i'm using a clone stamp or the healing brush 2 i'll make sure the sample is on current and below then i took away some minor blemishes her skin was great compared if it comes to blemishes because i didn't really do a lot here I also managed to fix her dirty nails. I really didn't want to take everything away because it would have looked fake. So I managed to clean the dirty nails, made sure to also patch this and all that, right? And let's see, did we do anything to the lips? Yeah, definitely we took away some problems on the lips. So this is how I ended up cleaning my image. With the nails, I used a clone stamp too um at a flow of 23 and also a bit of the patch too and the healing brush too and on the skin the healing brush too and the clone stamp too was used to take away all these blemishes right from there i moved into color grading sometimes i dodge and burn before i color grade and sometimes i color grade before i dodge and burn there's no right or wrong way but whatever works for you like i mentioned before i got into photoshop i said when you're editing dark skin always look at undertoning the skin right so that is what i did with the color grade and this is what happened in when i color graded this particular image so this is the after and this is the before after color grading and before color grading so i'll show you what i did here in the color grading folder what i did was one made sure i let me hide everything what i did was one made sure i desaturated the skin using a normal black and white layer and then my color lookup table the choco tone in one if you haven't bought that yet i am still selling it I'll leave my handle down in the description like I mentioned earlier so hit me up in my DMs and let's see how I can sell this to you if you're interested in the color lookup tables here in Photoshop. There I tried introducing color onto the eyeshadow so after applying the color lookup table on this I tried cleaning off the effect on the eyeshadow and the lips also not too much then i tried introducing color separately so i had yellows here and i had reds here then in all i added a bit of curves to this to add some punch to the image so some slight contrast color contrast that's what i mean to the image to make sure it was standing out then i tried matching the skin tone colors because Right from here, I'm going to do dodging and burning. Dodging and burning doesn't affect the colors, it affects the luminosity values, right? So that's what I'm looking at. So I'll make sure to fix the color issues. That's what, when you're using frequency separation, you create a color layer and you create a texture layer. So the color layer is to blend the colors. And my blend of colors is to create a new layer, make sure 
the layers blending mode is on color pick up my brush tool flow of five make sure i sample where i want to see on that particular side of the skin then hold option or alt on the keyboard sample then i clean or i mean i paint over where i need painting so i'm not really sure you're going to see the changes because it's very subtle i also made sure i introduced more blacks because it was yellows reds and black for the eyeshadow so i did that if you really can see there are some there are some changes happening on the forehead where there are a bit of blues introduced so i sampled here and i used to clean this side i mean paint over that side to make sure the colors were harmonizing the colors looked the same after that i desaturated some um colors on her skin especially the reds because if i should take off the desaturates the desaturates layer you realize some parts of the skin look more saturated than the other so that was done by using hue and saturation layer in my red channel made sure i sampled accurately to that side of the skin i want taken away or reduce then i reduce the saturation inverted the layer then i painted where i needed the saturation reduced right after i think i increase some saturation over here then i use this hue and saturation layer to make sure my reds my total reds on the skin were reduced so in all and i added a bit of selective coloring i think what all i did was to make sure my reds were moving into the yellows because initially when we started the reds were in the yellows like the skin was more in the yellows right so made sure i added more yellows into the reds to make it look more chocolatey that was all i did here in the overall color grading so this is the before once again and this is the after after doing this i realized my job became easier and the remaining job was to take time and dodge and bend the image and in dodging and bending i ended up creating two layers one locally dodging and bending everything and the second one minutely dodging and bending the parts i needed right so in all this is what happened during the dodging and bending process this is the first layer right let me turn that off first layer first folder of dodging and burning right this is what happened after dodging and burning then i needed to make minute changes by adding a second dodging and burning folder to make sure the image stepped up a little bit after that i created a noise layer so that i made the image look a little bit organic so if i should zoom in you're not really going to see the effects of the noise because i reduced the opacity and this is how this is the before and this is the after not much of a difference but when you zoom out when you zoom in you're not really seeing it but when you zoom out it's kind of adding a bit of texture some grains to the image making it look more organic and more appealing to the eye i don't like sharpening my images and as much as i don't like sharpness when i'm shooting the same way i don't like to sharpen my image but if i'm to sharpen anything from this particular image i'll sharpen the eye and also sharpen the lips i didn't whiten her teeth because i felt like her teeth was already white just that there are some yellow patches in there well no one is looking at that except me telling you right now after that i saved it and i sent it back into capture one and here in capture one i think i ended up pushing in more blacks and some white into this image so if i show you the before and after before and after and that was all i did for this particular image i posted on my instagram kindly go show me some love by double tapping on the image on my instagram page i'm going to leave a link down in the description don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel we are almost at 5k i've left a poll on my instagram feed i also left one here on my community feed on youtube can you let me know what special video you would like to see on my channel when we hit 5k subscribers thank you for supporting the brand thank you for sharing the videos thank you for liking as usual and if you have any concerns about this particular edit can you leave it down in the comment section below also don't forget to subscribe as usual don't forget to share this video and i'll see you in the next walkthrough thank you and peace